are heading to a bordering community between Lagos State and Ogun State to bring you the compelling stories of three sisters, Shola, Christiana and Jumoke, who have a peculiar health condition. This condition makes them smaller than dwarfs, even though they are adults. These adults were identified by core members of Lagos State while discharging their national duties. We are bringing you this story to bring it to public consciousness, to raise awareness of this condition for these girls and to bring help and assistance to them because they too are Nigerians. Before we have a conversation with the Obadinas, our contacts went in to put in a word on our behalf to prep them and warmed up for our interview. I waited here in joyful anticipation. And finally, here they are, one after the other, they come out graciously. Okay, you are Shola. Okay. This is Shola. Okay. 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 We first set out on the assumption that the condition could be cartilage hair hypoplasia, according to our lead sources to the story. Cartilage hair hypoplasia is an inherited condition that causes an affected person to have an extremely small stature with short arms and legs. This is known as short-limbed dwarfism. People with cartilage hair hypoplasia also tend to have fine, sparse hair and abnormal cartilage. We are clearly not sure what the condition is. However, the ladies share what they go through on a daily. My name is Obadino. Uluwashola Miriam. I was born on March 30, 1988. I want my leg to be straight. From woman to my place in this place, it's too difficult. I'm about to be 28. If I think it's like to stretch back, I will not be able to. Because I will be doing up and down. I'm not going to be tired. I'm Sana. I'm 16 years of age. Anytime we have any subject, maybe I don't even want to go to the lab. It's my friend that used to help me. But I can't understand. I cannot even move faster or run up and down or jumping. I like to be moving and I can't do it. While here with the parents, it became obvious that both parents are also unsure what the condition is. It was neither identified nor named. My first daughter, when she came, when it is about five, six, seven months, we noticed the, you know, she has to start crawling. Then we would not pick up in it. When she started trying to move and stagger, I, then we notice that she's not moving properly. So we have to take her first to General Hospital. From General Hospital, they require us to go be. And since then, we have been from one place to another medically. Faced with this reality, their parents recall how their journey has been for them, the good and the not so good, their highs and low moments. <laughs> But Timo 
As you see them, I learned that sometimes I, I felt, you see, when this guy was talking, I felt like, you know, that kind of thing. So they, they make me happy because of their intelligence. But like when I look at their challenges, well, I have to praise God for giving them to me. And back here in Lagos, not certain what medical condition it still is, we sought an expert explanation. Professor Abiola is a renowned endocrinologist in Nigeria, and in further consultation with her colleagues abroad, she thinks differently of the condition. When you hear that IPO, please, yeah, because it's IPO, it means that, you know, like in the, in the mucopolysaccharidosis, even in the hair, the hair are not sparse, but here, even sometimes the eyelash is hypopigmented. So when I saw that picture, the children had hair. Whether you are 20 or you are 50 or 60, you are, your hair will be sparse and thin and hypopigmented. But the hair are not hypopigmented, they are black. You see, that's why I was saying that most likely this is a bucopolysaccharidosis. In both cases, they are short statured. And both, all, both, both the mucopolysaccharidosis and that other one would also have um, bone deformities. You know, the bones are not straight. Some are, sometimes you find the leg is bowed or the leg is K. You find some bones are ankylos. Those are common in both cases. And both cases, you have autoimmune, that is, they are prone to infections. So depending on how deficient that enzyme is, will determine how severe the problems will be. They are also, they don't really have mental interdiction. That is the cartilage, they're, they're okay mentally. Also, but in the buccal polysaccharidosis, there are some, because buccal polysaccharidosis consists of seven or eight different types, and some are more severe than the others. Some have associated mental retardation. The mere fact that they didn't have mental retardation, I knew they were not all us. They were not Sarfilo, Filippo. Those ones, they tend to have mental retardation apart from all this deformity that we're talking about with it. We are obviously in a dilemma to find out what the real situation is, as both cartilage hair hypoplasia and mucopolysaccharidosis shares certain elements in common, which Shola, Christiana and Jumoke exhibit. In the cartilage hair, yes, they have uh, hearing problems. They have what we call apnea. That is, they have breathing problems, they snore. And then when they're breathing, it will look as if they're no longer breathing. Then they'll suddenly start to, to breathe again. And they're prone to respiratory tract infection. And of course, they also have hearing problems. But also, in some cases of bucopolysaccharidosis, you also have the same problems. Problems of hearing, problems of uh, infection, problems of snoring, problems of apnea. So they have a lot of things that are very, very similar. All these things, because they're all metabolic, they all affect growth. So they look the same, but they are different. If I see one with mental retardation, I know it can never be cartilage. If I see one with that, then I begin to say, is it moko? Then I look at the hair, you know, and then even the hearing, one is more one is worse than the other. As we talked about living a better life, Mr. Badino says not paying attention to negative comments has helped out a lot. Even from my immediate family, you know, there are some utterances you will not like to hear that comes out from people's mouth. So there's nothing you can do with that because you just have to cope when you find yourself in such a situation because it is not my making or their making for being like this. So 
thinking about or feeling what people are saying, we make one to lose focus of what you are planning for them. So I don't listen to whatever, unless people are come with positive uh, advice or whatever. But whatever, whoever says something negative about, I don't even hear it, even though if you say it beside me. So I, I won't allow it to get to my mind because it will distract me. With severe immune deficiency, they need to monitor their health at all times, as opportunistic infections can be fatal. The last one is one that is giving us more challenges. We've been on her for years so that she can move freely on herself. We spend a lot, buy this, do this, do that, and we'll be doing it. But up to this Monday, she was still in the hospital. Over 30 years down the line after the birth of these ladies, their parents still do not know or have the right diagnosis. They only rely on what they were told at the point of birth, which clearly is not solution to the problem. But <laughs> Plus TV Africa is committed to getting this story out as a way of seeking help for these ladies. And here is part of our findings. The problem is we don't do genetic studies in, in any part of Africa as of now. So if you really want to do a genetic study, I think they're just trying to start off one in Botswana and so few other places. But nothing is fully on ground as of now, even South Africa. You still have to send some of your samples outside this uh, the continent to other places where, uh, where there are labs that are into this. And because this even it is rare, even globally, it's not like it's every lab. So you have to actually look for the labs that are doing this genetic study so that they can look at, uh, at the genes and then determine which, where is the problem? Which enzyme is the problem? Is it one of these ones that already we have drugs? If there's one of these that we have drugs, then we have to now source the drugs. Now that drug is going to be very expensive. And uh, you know, in Nigeria, the government does not uh, actually help us as such. So we need NGOs, we need uh, philanthropists who will help these children. For example, the, the children, it is possible that there are drugs that by the time we finish with all the uh, uh, investigations that we were able to get drugs that will actually help. Now we will get the we will get it, but how do we get it to the children? Who pays for it? That is where the problem would now be. The other thing, most of these tests cannot be done here. Very few can be done in the in places like Sin Lab that are beginning to want to do some of these tests, but not many of it. And the few they can do are pretty expensive. 
Now, even if we say let's use our laboratory, maybe our biochemist, it's not that they can't do it, but the reagents that they need are not available. So, if we still come down to, we still cannot do those tests. So, if we can do some of those tests, it will at least help us to be able to say, okay, this is at least two or three of them. This is most likely. If you don't see any of those three, then we know it has to be any of those other five ones that we are dealing with. But the problem is we don't have laboratory support and it's not their fault. They don't have reagents. And if they want to bring in this reagent, it's going to be so expensive. And so it's going to be, um, people will not be able to pay for it. And you know, everything, the laboratory wants to make money. So they're not going to go into something that will not give them a return. So those are the those are the issues that are on ground. So in everywhere over the world, the government are the ones that back these children, because there is no lab that will just do it free of them for them. But when you have the government backing, and this is where the uh, making sure this uh, having um, insurance, if there's health insurance on ground. A lot of these children can be helped. But then it's not just having health insurance. We have to ensure that no communicable disease are on the health insurance. Because they're not on the health insurance, they will not be covered and it will still be where we are now. So if the health insurance can be made to expand a little bit more to accommodate these non communicable diseases that are common in the children. And then finally, if they, if they don't succumb, as a child, they become, they grow into the adulthood like the girls, like the women. Those ones are not girls, they are women that uh, show in their pictures. In spite of their obvious physical challenge, their dream of going back to school and fulfilling their life's purpose is palpable. I wish to go to school. I wish to go to my school and second school. But only university I want to go. What do you want to study in university? I can't see. I want to be a medical doctor and I want a free education also. Everything to be free for me. But is there a chance for these ladies to live a normal life? They can live a better life than they're living now. If you get them on time, globally it is very uncommon. So invariably a lot of them are forming network all over the world on the internet but you have to know which one you are so if you know that you are a cartilage here or you find out that you're a haulers or you're a hunter then you can join any of those uh, group on the internet and they do a lot of wonderful things they help you source drugs when drugs are available they help you source um, so many things there are helps help to help you with your deformities to make it more livable and in many places they live like a normal life they do normal things the ones that are intelligent go to school they go to school they work they they're doctors with all these things so it depends on uh, the way the, we want to look at it if the government or if we can form NGOs that can help these children uh, especially genetic, if you can find some genetic, uh, develop a genetic uh, hub whereby we can send samples to and we can quickly, because when they are born, you see it, you observe it, you, you notice the abnormality. Most of them have a big head. In fact, many times people will say they have hydrocephalus. It's, uh, it's when as they go that you now see that it's not really hydrocephalus, although some of them will develop hydrocephalus. Uh, like the like this cartilage, they are prone to developing hydrocephalus. So when you see this kind of children, you if you can help them, if you can help, correlate them to where their the drugs have been, so that they start on the drugs and things. So with that, they should have a better life, much better than they have now. Some of them are in real pain. You know, when all the with all those deformities, they are in pain. Right. So if you can do anything that will not make them to have ankylosis, skyphosis, loidosis and all those things, then it's better life. As nature would have it, 
They thankfully are able to care for their personal hygiene to an extent, but that does not take away the reality that there are so much more they can't do for themselves. Now, what would you do if you are left with the burden of caring for others or your children, as in this case, challenged with this peculiar condition? A mother's love is tested and tried. She never gives up, but does she have a choice? I want to say to my mother, I'm going to to my mother. I'm going to go 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 to my mother. A toilet, to buy the toilet. To buy the big coat, yeah, that's the lot. Brush or toothpaste, my love. Brush, toothpaste is no brush. Oh my phone, no. Oh my, to my phone, my big cano, my dad's big bed, my dad's bed. Can't talk about my shiny bed. Go away. But their hope remains in a future that is bright, and for that future, they appeal for help. I want you to help me in any area that you can help concerning my feet. I want people. To take, to take my leg in this condition I am. I want to go to for, I want to further my education. What I need is that I want, I want to live healthy, and I need to be working faster, I want to be working very well. That's what I want. Listen, boys, to my wife, so who me look on me. Fun on my Nigeria, you pay. Lati de 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 so ke koma dale furara mo. Ela ke ju ni pe ne ti education mo. O wo mi lo po lo po veka mo Nigeria kono mi lo wo. Bu bu pato malle safuni. Uri a mo moji kono safuni. Se badura pe kolo mo asi ona mo no lo wado ru ko Jesus. I'm pleading to Nigerians concerning their medical uh, assistant. They have problem in, in their legs. They cannot move properly. Then at the same time, they are, uh, they are uh, they don't, their hearing is not all that sound. So they have hearing challenge. And at the same time, their their breathing is not um, somehow not normal because they sometimes they breathe when they are about uh, three four feet to you. You can be hearing their breathing. So, which we have been trying, but it's still persisting. When we came here the other time, these ladies were so interested in us, like they were like, they also want to put on this khaki. So we are calling on well many Nigerians to help see that these girls go to school, no matter what it takes. They want to ensure one day they wear it like we are wearing it. Even though where they are staying is far, even though it's at the extreme, it's at the border, it's sharing border with uh, Ogun State and Lagos State. But these are human beings like us too. They are Nigerians, so we have to come to their aid. As at today, Jumoke, Christiana and Shola have not received the medical help and aid they need. The diagnosis is yet to be done to determine their condition. This is not the end of this story. It is only the beginning of seeking ways of getting help for Shola, Christiana, and Jumoke to live a better life. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. You will be walking in Nigeria. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You are the only one with love.